Hi, welcome to ShowMeTheCurry.com. I'm Hithil. I'm Anuja. And today we're going to show you how to make a black bean burger. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to give a special thanks out to Ami, who inspired us to do this recipe. So let's get started. Over here we have a skillet. And we have one tablespoon of olive oil heating up on medium heat. And we're going to add half of a medium onion, so it's approximately half cup of chopped onion, and about two to three cloves of garlic. And we're going to let it caramelize just a little bit. Okay, this looks good. We're going to put in the mushrooms next. It's about a half cup. We're going to cook the mushrooms so the moisture, they release the moisture and it's all evaporated. And that just took about a minute or two. And next go in half a cup of bell peppers. We're choosing red just because it looks really pretty in there. Mm -hmm. But you can use green or yellow or whatever bell pepper you find. And again, we're cooking this uh, just for a minute or two until the bell peppers slightly soften. You don't want them to become mushy. They sh should have their crunch still. The bell pepper look done, but not overdone. So we're going to add in taco seasoning now. One tablespoon and mix. If you don't have taco seasoning, um, basically it's just a mixture of paprika, cumin powder, garlic powder, onion powder, and uh, you know you can make it at home if you need to. So we're just going to cook it for about 30 seconds until everything gets mixed in well and uh, coated, and it's coated all the vegetables. And we're going to turn it off now. And at this point, after you switch off the stove, we're going to add in half cup of finely shredded carrots. And we're not going to cook this, but it's just going to get mixed in with the other warm veggies and get incorporated. And now we're going to just keep it aside and allow it to cool down. So while our mixture is uh, cooling down, we have a food processor over here. And uh, in this food processor, we're going to add in one slice of whole grain or whole wheat bread. Now you can use regular bread, but uh, this bread just has a little more texture to it and it gives you a better end product. Just break it into big chunks. And we're going to turn the food processor on and just crumble it. Okay. And in the food processor, we're going to put in one cup of brown rice that we've cooked. Uh, we just cooked it in the pressure cooker, same as regular rice. One cup of rice to two cups of water. You just pressure cook it one whistle, just like regular rice. That's about it. So one cup of brown rice. And you definitely want to use brown rice and not your regular white rice uh, because uh, white rice is mushy and this one actually has some texture. And uh, half a cup of corn. Now this is just frozen corn. We've just rinsed it and we're just going to put it in here. And the veggies are, have cooled down. I'm going to add that, that as well to the food processor. Look at the color. Mm -hmm. And we're going to add some salt in. Remember, we haven't salted anything yet. The taco seasoning had a little bit, but we still need to compensate for the rest. So to taste, salt. So we are making these black bean burgers a little on the spicier side. We are putting in some pickled jalapenos and it's to taste. And we'll cover our food processor. And it's really important to pulse this just you know, until everything kind of comes together. Mm -hmm. And depending on how powerful your food processor is, it may be different numbers of pulses. <laughs> so we pulsed it about six times so far. And after that, uh, we're going to add our black beans in here. This is a can of black beans, and uh, it's about a 15 ounce can. And what, all we did was to rinse it and drained out all the liquid. And uh, we're going to use three fourths of it in here, and we're going to keep one fourth of this amount for later, but you can just wing it, you don't have to do exact measure. And we'll pulse it a few more times. And again, you don't want to over process this. Once the beans go in there, uh, they become really mushy, so it's just hold yourself back. <laughs> just a couple of pulses. And we'll remove this into our bowl. So after you've transferred it, over here we are using some uh, soy granules. So basically, you know, you get it at the Indian store, mm -hmm. you also get them at uh, regular American grocery stores in the frozen section. But this is from the Indian store, um, those nutrient nuggets, they're just granules. So we, what, uh, we've cooked them as per the packaged uh, instructions and we just drained it out and squeezed out some of the water. And it's about half a cup, we're going to add it to the mixture. One cup of instant oats, five sprigs of cilantro finely chopped. 
And remember the beans we had saved? We're going to add them now. What this does is, you know, it doesn't mash up so you can actually see the beans in the patty. So it kind of looks pretty. And we'll give this a really good mix, get everything incorporated. And once it's really mixed in well, this is a good time to do a taste test and make sure the salt and uh, spices is okay for you. Okay. Now again, very important, like Hithal mentioned, do not overwork your mixture because it will let a lot of water go and the beans will become pasty and you'll have this um, pasty patty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want that. So you want it to have the texture, you want to be able to taste some of the stuff as is and you want it to have that little spring like um, you know texture that burgers have so and you've got two eggs that we've beaten not very very well but you know just enough to mix easily you can add it to the mixture and mix really well the thing about using eggs in this recipe is that it really makes the texture burger like if you are a vegetarian or vegan and you choose not to use the eggs these things will still taste fantastic they're just delicious but uh, the only thing that you're gonna miss out on is that uh, it won't have that springy action of a burger and it will be more like a patty or a tiki but you know it still tastes great mm -hmm. so actually we did a lot of experimenting you know we've been experimenting on this recipe for quite a while and uh, one of the things we want we tried out was the flaxseed substitute for this particular recipe and unfortunately it didn't do anything right. so I mean whether we put it there or not it really did nothing so we just decided not to so that's why we're recommending that you don't even bother with that so um, you can have it with or without eggs it still tastes excellent so our mixture is ready and uh, now we're ready to form the patties and cook them. So we have a skillet here and it's a non-stick skillet. Mm -hmm. We're going to have it heating up on medium heat. And over here we have some panko breadcrumbs. Come in a box like this. Mm -hmm. They're pretty easily available, mm -hmm. not just at any specialty store. Um, get them at regular grocery stores. So they have a wonderful crunch and they're a little different and way better than the regular breadcrumbs, right? Unfortunately, they're Japanese actually. It's a Japanese style um, breadcrumb. Yes. Amazing. So we've got a little bit here in a platter. And now what you're going to do is we have buns that you've taken out of the fridge. So what you're going to do is we're going to keep these as a guideline to how big we want to make the patties. So the burgers need to fit in to this. You don't want them very small and you don't want them oozing out. So here it is. So we're going to make them according to this. All you have to do is take a handful and just roll. Just form a patty. You, want to, you don't want it too thick. You want them a little on the thinner side because that way it's crisp and it cooks all the way through and it holds shape better. So this is ready. I'm going to dip it in the panko. It's a little soft so you know, just be a little careful. And just kind of push those crumbs inside so it holds. And once that's coated, our skillet is hot. We're going to add just a little bit of olive oil. And once that's hot, we're going to gently put it on like this. And if you feel that it's a little thick, at this point you can just gently press down with your spatula and thin it out just a bit. And just move it around the pan so that all of the oil that's there gets coated on the bottom. It makes a nice crisp layer. And we're going to leave it alone until it makes a nice brown crust on the bottom before we flip it over. So one of the things that Ami suggested um, gave us an idea of what she does is that she makes these things ahead of time and uh, just freezes them. So on, on those days where you don't have uh, you know, dinner ready or you're, you're in a rush taking your kids around, you can just pull this out of the freezer, pop it into the skillet and you have an instant awesome. healthy meal. Yes. So we'll show you how to do that. We just have regular plastic wrap. Just take a small piece. And I made the patty and I dipped it again in the panko and we're just going to freeze it as is. Just pull all the corners towards each other and seal it tightly. And at this point you can actually make it into a nice patty shape. Just press it down how you want. The plastic will hold it in. And the good thing about doing this is, you know, they're all individually wrapped. So if you want one or you want three, you can pull out that number. You don't have to defrost the whole thing just to get two out of the 10 that you've made, so right. just a little 
better idea. So to keep the shape on this, you can either take a baking tray and just lay them all flat and put it in the freezer until they freeze and then take them out and put them in a Ziploc bag. Or if you have a, like a container with a lid, like one of those uh, cylinder containers, you can just stack them up on top of each other and it kind of stays in there nicely in your freezer. And when the bottom looks a little brown, we can drizzle a little bit of oil, olive oil on the top, smooth it out, and we're going to flip it around gently. Perfect. Looks gorgeous. So I peeked under here and it looks beautiful. So this is ready to come off. And over here I had, I've actually gone ahead and toasted the buns and they're really warm so it's nice. Put the burger on that. Wow. Beautiful. Yep. Looks gorgeous. Yep. And something that is healthy and tastes good. I think that's one of the big complaints yeah. kids usually have is either it's healthy or it's tasty. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> but this is this takes care of both the things. Fabulous. So for garnish we can put a little bit a dollop of light sour cream and some salsa. Look at it. Fabulous. So with all that goodness inside of these patties, it makes it a substantial meal, you know, uh, a good dinner, a satisfying meal. Um, it can be lunch also, but you know, it's, it's just yummy. Any which way you have it is superb. All right. And uh, you know, that one lot that we did, it made six of these big size patties. But if you do, if you have the smaller buns, then you know, it's, it can make up to about eight of them. So. It's a good amount. Right. Yeah. yeah. And of course, like Ami said, you can do double batches and, you know, make one for dinner, freeze one for later and uh, same effort and you get two meals. <laughs> right. So enjoy your spicy black bean burger and join us again on another episode of ShowMeTheCurry.com. Adding a pinch of spice to your life.